Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day you're joining our service, welcome. Though we meet in many different places and join together at all kinds of different times, we are one in the Spirit. God makes us his family. So may God bless you as you share together in this time of worship with us. We begin today with some announcements which Julia and I will share with you now. Our next live in-person service of worship at South Holborn Church will take place on Sunday the 20th of June at 10.30 a.m. Once again, restrictions will be in place and numbers will be limited, so booking will be necessary. The phone number for booking is on screen and will be available on the website. The booking line will be open from Monday the 14th of June. In addition to that, we have virtual vestry this week at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. Come along for a chat and some time to just relax with one another. Come for the whole time from 7 to 8 or just stay for a few minutes and say hello. We're planning for another yarn bombing at the church. We would like to cover the sign outside the church like we did earlier in the pandemic. If anyone would like to start knitting squares for this, that would be greatly appreciated. Any colour of wool will do. Any size of square will be fine. We hope to be ready to cover the sign in August and we'll get details of how you can get your knitted squares to church nearer that time. We join in our call to worship. Here in worship, shared with all the family of God's people. Let the Lord's name be lifted up. Let God our Saviour be praised. For here is the place of God's healing. Here is the time of God's blessing. Here is the moment of God's call. So with heart and voice, with faith and praise, let us worship the Lord. Grace, caring, bringing, gives us the grace. He is the one who. 
Let us come before God together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Holy One, Eternal Father, Saviour, Redeemer, Creator, so many names, so many ways that we know you, loving God, so many ways that the world has experienced your presence, for you have always been reaching out to us. You have always been sharing yourself. You have always sought to be known. And however we see you, whatever we know of you, whatever way we have encountered you, you are our God and we are your people. We are drawn to you, called, redeemed and restored. And as the family of God together, we worship and adore you. We give our thanks and we offer our praise. But we are also guilty too, Holy One. Guilty of having our feet in two camps. Of claiming our place in your family. But living by fallen standards and sinful ways. Forgive us, Lord, for we can be stubborn. We can be selfish, greedy and unloving. Forgive us when fear overwhelms us and drives us into poor decisions. Forgive us when doubts seep into us and cause us to question your way. Forgive us all of our sins. And Lord, help us to face our fear and our doubt, to bring them to you and to seek your guidance. Give us the courage to follow in your way and give us the strength to make the right choices. Help us to lead each other in your way. Help us to follow your lead, Lord, to be bold and strong in sharing your love for everyone. And now in worship, open our hearts and our minds and our lives to experience you close and to receive your call. We ask it in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name we say together the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Our first hymn today is hymn 554, Rock of Ages.
Our reading today comes from the letter of James, beginning at chapter 1 and verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete and lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Thanks be to God from these words from his holy scriptures. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your holy word that speaks to us each day. May you use it today to open our lives to your wisdom and to your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have you ever been planning your day and you've had so many options, you weren't sure what to do? Maybe it was a lovely sunny day and you thought, I could take a stroll along the beach. But then your partner said, why don't we go out for a meal? Or what if we take a ride down the road there and go for a walk? So many different choices. Joe and I used to have an abundance of choices and a little bit more income, and we could tend to be more impractical. So we would waffle about, and sometimes it would be very frustrating. So we finally figured out what we wanted to do. But since having a few children and being more uh, busy in our lives, we realized that practicality is really important. And that led us to be more decisive. When we look at this letter of James to the church, to people who are believing Christians, we realize that there is a level of practicality here. um, And he's calling them to, to move beyond their waffling back and forth on so many things. He's asking them to be more focused in what they do. And and that's a great thing. So we're going to learn a bit more about this letter of James and who James is and who he's writing to, because they're important parts of the story. You see, the, the name James was a common name in the ancient world, so that doesn't really give us a clue. However, we do know that the Lord's brother was called James as well. And there's some tips within the text that tell us that perhaps, indeed, this was the Lord's brother. And he calls himself a servant. He doesn't say, I'm the brother of Jesus. He's not trying to be bold and claim some kind of authority. But he calls himself a servant uh, of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he says in the very opening of the letter. And some have suggested that that was because James and his brothers, his other brothers, really struggled to accept Jesus uh, as the Messiah. And they didn't really believe that this is who he was while he walked upon the earth. If we read from John chapter 7, verses 2 to 6, we see evidence of the fact that his brothers were pretty baffled about who this Jesus was. Now, the festival, Jewish festival, of booths was near. So his brothers said to him, leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples may also see the works you are doing. For no one who wants to be widely known acts in secret. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, my time has not yet come, but your time is always here. And so we see in just a snippet of the passage, and there are other places in the Bible of the New Testament that talk about Jesus and his family. But right in this little snippet, we see that his brothers were not fully understanding or appreciating his ministry. And so this idea that this could be the Lord's brother writing this letter and not identifying himself as so makes sense because there was a perhaps after the resurrection and after the understanding that Jesus was the Messiah, 
that there was a little bit of shame that went along with his brothers who had denied him and who had not walked beside him. And so many of the early church really believed this letter was written by James because he, he humbly approached the fact that he was a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ and did not necessarily own the fact that he was the Lord's brother. Now, in addition to thinking about the fact that it was perhaps the Lord's brother who wrote the letter, because we know that he had authority in the Jerusalem church from other writings and acts, we also want to understand who were the people that James was writing to. It's a little bit tricky in this writing. It doesn't just say, I write to you so-and-so, but there's kind of a general description that's given. James writes to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, greetings the 12 tribes in the dispersion. So where have we heard about the 12 tribes before? Of course, it comes from Judaism and the 12 tribes in the Jewish context. And so there is absolutely an allusion here to the fact that these people receiving the letter were of a Jewish origin. And at the time in the early church, Christians began within the Jewish tradition because that's where Jesus came from. So it's very likely that this was written to a group of Jewish Christians <clears throat> who had gone out because of persecution. They were dispersed. The dispersion and the diaspora had happened at different times in Jewish history. When the Babylonians had conquered the Jews and destroyed the temple, they scattered to many different places. And, and so again, when persecutions happened within the early church, when the first martyr was killed that we read about in Acts, Stephen, Christians began to spread out like, like the early Jews had done to different places such as Phoenicia, Cyprus, Syria, and Antioch. And so it is possible and likely that this writer is addressing the Christians, the Jewish Christians who have gone out into these places. Now there would have been synagogues in those areas and that was the place where Christians began to worship at first. There would have been people that they knew and it would have been a way to spread the message. And so it's likely that this particular letter, it can be very general in some ways, was written to encourage believers in a variety of different places. Now verses 2 to 4 indicate that some kind of persecution is taking place and that the believers were being challenged by the trials and yet were remaining strong in their faith. My brothers and sisters, it reads, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete lacking in nothing. So as I mentioned earlier, Christians were possibly being persecuted at this very early point in the church. So probably before 60 CE, because we know a little bit after that, James was martyred. And we can see that these Christians were struggling. They were struggling in the midst of persecution and their faith was really being tested. And when we get to verses 5 to 8, we really understand that they're struggling perhaps with some doubts as well. They're, they're struggling with who is uh, God in the midst of their lives. Can they hold on? And James is encouraging them to not be double-minded, to hold steady, to be decisive, to remember who called them to the faith. Indeed, this may happen to us in our lives as well. It's not uncommon when we face struggles to doubt God, to doubt God's goodness, to want to yell at God even over what's going on in our lives. It's part of the human uh, emotive sense of who we are that these feelings bubble up with inside us. God is big enough to take all of those things. God is big enough to hear our deepest questions and worries and fears, just like he was in this early time when James wrote to them. Let me, let me read these verses for you in verses five to eight. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. It's a hard word. James is very straightforward and does not mince words. 
when we allow ourselves to go back and forth and we don't turn to the one who really can set us straight, we do end up receiving things that are confusing and uncertain. It is harder to understand what God is saying to us when we're in the midst of these troubling times. Indeed, I can remember times in my life as well where it was hard to hear God's voice. Growing up as a young person in my teens, I had a friend who shared with me who Jesus was and his love for me. And I was able to see that I could have a better way of making choices in my life. And it it was a hard struggle to turn that over to God because I liked making my own choices. I liked doing my own thing. Like Adam and Eve in the garden, I wanted to set my own will and, and sort of sort out what knowledge was. And yet, when I looked at my life and I saw the ways that I had made choices that just led to other bad choices and the people that I hung around, I realized that I was going nowhere fast. And without the Lord's intervention in my life, I didn't know where I would be. And so that idea of being able to trust one that was so much greater than I was, one that had plans for me and had a wonderful idea of what he wanted in my life and the love and the grace that he could share with me was a great comfort. And that in itself helped me to stop tossing back and forth because I could trust that God knew what was good for me even though I didn't always I didn't always see that. Life isn't perfect since then. It certainly has been a journey and there's been ups and downs. And as I mentioned before, there are times in my life where I have doubted God's goodness. And I can remember one such time, and there've not been often, but one such time, and I even remember the road I was driving on and just praying, Lord, give me the faith to believe. Give me the ability to trust you. Because sometimes in our humanness, we just don't have enough. And yet God gave it and always gives it. And, and it was in that moment that I just knew that my faith would be okay and that it was through faith that I could know that God was with me and would never leave me. I believe that that's what God wants for us, to be willing to cry out to him even when we have doubts that surface in our lives. And clearly that was what the people were doing that James was writing to. They were facing immense struggle in their lives and, and they were, their feet were to the fire for their faith and they had to find the strength to go on and sometimes they didn't know if they could. And James is saying to them, bear up, keep steady, know that God will give you what you need. And that's the beauty about trusting God, that he always does. He always provides for us and plants his dreams in our hearts and gives us the opportunity to see new things because he loves us. One of my favorite verses of um, James is this idea that we do not have to doubt. That in faith, as we read already, ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea. And you know, when you think of the sea and we look at it, we see that it keeps on rolling and it, and it rolls over us sometimes. And sometimes if you're wading in deep, you can imagine that you can be pulled out even further. Where we live in the States, you can go in because it's warm. <laughs> it's uh, not super warm, but it's warm in the summertime. And there's what's called a rip current that can come underneath and it pulls you out further Further, and it can drag you under and it can be very dangerous. We've known people who have died in these rip currents and it's that sense that when the wave falls over us we get pulled in tossing back and forth but if we don't allow that if we trust God with an assurance that even though we are uncertain of the way ahead he has us in his hands then then we can be assured that our life is going to be at peace. We can't be assured of what's going to happen in our life. We can't be assured of how things are going to turn out, but we can know that we will never be alone. God wants to show us his plans for us. He doesn't want to keep secrets from us. He wants us to have his vision for the world, to see our lives and see the beauty that he can make of it. Sometimes that can be harder than we ever imagined because when we see with God's eyes, we're challenged to do and become who he wants us to be. Indeed, we have to ask ourselves, am I willing to serve like Jesus does? Am I willing to give and not be bound by my own desires? 
Am I willing to go into places that are hard and to do what God calls me to do, to be his love, his hands and feet in this world? And sadly, sometimes the answer is no. It's too hard. It's too difficult. And that's when I get back into that place of tossing to and fro because I'd much rather be wishy-washy. I think maybe God doesn't really want this for me. Wouldn't he want something easier? Because it's so much easier to trust him when he blesses us. It's so much easier to trust him when the way ahead seems easy. It's easier to trust him when things are lined up just so, just the way we hoped they would be. And yet, that often doesn't happen. When things are mixed up and upside down, it's in those times where we must fully rely on God and hang on to him and, and hold on for that security that he wants us to have, knowing that he will not lead us astray. The early Christians had given up their culture. They had given up their identity as Jews because, yes, they were still connected, but they were quickly being set aside. They were quickly being persecuted because they now believed that Jesus was the Messiah. They had given up everything, and they were in the midst of trying to figure out how they could love this God and serve this Messiah, even when so much was uncertain. And yes, they faced those doubts, as I mentioned earlier. And yes, it was hard to go against the flow, just like it's hard in our lives. And as I, as I said earlier, when God puts his dreams in our heart for what he wants, when he shows us the way forward, it can be so much more powerful because we click, we go, I remember when God showed me that. I remember when I felt that feeling and now he's revealing it. Indeed, one of my favorite quotes from Frederick Buchner says, The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. So God places in our hearts his dreams for us, his goals for us, his love for us. And if we receive that without tossing back and forth, then he's going to use that. It's going to be for an intentionality, for, for showing something in the world or meeting a great need within the world. That's really hard to do. It's been something throughout my whole life that God has put before me. And I, and I think I may have shared in other places that one of my life verses is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. If I trust in God, if I put all of my going back and forth and my waffling before him, and if I allow him to plant his dreams in my heart, then his paths will be very clear to me. I'll be able to see them before me and I'll rejoice in walking upon them. It doesn't always happen. And as I said, when we go off the trail and we doubt or we're uncertain, it's those times when we know the greatness of our God because he will not turn us aside. He will not give up on us. He still embraces us and give us, gives us those reminders that we can have faith in the midst of our doubts, helps us to listen when we don't wanna hear, helps us to turn our hearts away from being double-minded when all we wanna do is do our own will. Indeed, I encourage you in the coming weeks to look through the letter of James it's very practical, it's very hard hitting, and yet if we open our hearts to listen and we're willing not to waver, we'll see that our God is planning within us the dreams that he has for us to love and serve the world, to be willing to start right in our own family, in our own neighborhood, to be willing to go beyond our own desires, to be willing to embrace God's truth and not our own. We can't always see what's happening in the moment, but we can often look back and see how God has led us throughout our lives. And we can gain strength in that for the times where we do struggle. God does give us assurance of our doubts and our fears. And God gives us his love that provides each and every step along the way. In the midst of chaos, our God gives us stability. And so I pray if you have the chance this week, share a few of those moments with me. Where are some places where God turned your life around? Where are some places where God planted his dreams in your heart? Where are some places where you were doubting, but God gave you faith? 
as we share these stories, the Christian faith is alive and it encourages me and it will hopefully encourage you to hear that we're not alone in this journey and each and every day we strive to live for him. Amen and thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the ways that you have walked beside us throughout our lives. Thank you for the ways in which we have trusted you and learned lessons of love and grace. Thank you for the steps that we have taken, the times where we have had to learn patience and endurance. Thank you for the times that you have shown us how much we need you and how much you have saved us from our own failings. Lord, give us a willingness to step out of the boat like Peter did. Help us to walk beside you and never give up. We may feel alone, but we are not. We may feel overcome, but we will overcome. We may feel defeated, but we will be victorious with your help. Lord, may we share some of this encouragement with others we meet. May we love and forgive and give in the ways that you have done so far for us. As we are coming out of lockdown, let us remember all of us are fragile. There's been much grief and darkness in the last year. There has been much fear and sorrow, but through it all you have held on to us. Through our drifting to and fro and being double-minded, you have welcomed us back with open arms. Lord, may we continue to listen to others' pain and to gently show them your care, to understand when their faith has wavered, to point them back to you because we know we've been there too. Lord, may believers not forget how much we have come together to help others during this time of need and how, as we have served you, the blessing of doing that together. Let us not forget that we have walked beside our neighbors and put ourselves second. Let us continue to shine your light into the world and be willing to take time to see the way you are at work in new ways in this world. We are not fully there yet and are still grappling with an emerging possible third wave. We pray for the NHS as they prepare. We pray that tired workers would be refreshed, appreciated, and given new momentum. We pray for all of us that we would be careful and not spread this disease any further, particularly if we've received our vaccine, the two JAGs. May we be even more careful for those who have not. May we wear our masks. May we be willing to follow the rules. Lord, we ask that justice would reign in this world and all who need to will receive the vaccine. Thank you that we have been given many blessings in our lives so that we who have plenty can give to those who do not, and we can be willing to give beyond what we think we need. We can be willing to give sacrificially. Let us take a moment now to pray for those in our lives who need a touch from you, and that may be ourselves, and for the concerns that come to our mind in this time of quiet. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers and do respond. Thank you, Lord, that you speak and we can open our ears to you. Give us strength for today and vision for tomorrow and help us to move away from our double-minded ways. Give us renewal even when we face doubts and trials. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our last hymn today is hymn 556. I need thee.
out from here today, may we know that our God loves us. Despite our doubting and our moving back to and fro, he can give us the vision to see the future. He can welcome us into his way of looking at the world and see the grace and love that is for us and for others. Receive now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen.